So if I were to ask you what are the most serious issues confronting Meghalaya today, what would those issues be? This education and health is one of the main factors. Unless and until we deal with this one, I'm telling you, our state is going to collapse in the future. Many people think that you are a lone ranger. You, you don't work well with other people. I work well with other people, ma'am. I definitely like, if somebody's thinking good for the people, definitely I'll be there. I don't want, I'm not greedy. I don't want any, you know, any kind of a power. But if somebody's doing good thing, definitely I will follow. Uh, hello, viewers. Here we are to present another episode of Upfront. Our guest today is Mr. Saleng Sangma. He first was elected from Dalamgiri constituency on a Congress ticket in 2008. In 2013, he contested from uh, Gambegre in West Garo Hills as an independent. In 2018, he joined the NCP and contested from the same constituency. Now, we are heading towards 2023 and we are wondering as to which political party he will join and whether he will stick to the same constituency. <laughs> oh, anyway, ma'am, thank you for the questions. Uh, you see, my journey uh, as a politician has been uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, exciting. exciting and then like, mm -hmm. uh, Adventurous, you know, adventurous <laughs> also, ma'am. But the fact is that, like, uh, I never wanted to switch from one party to another party. On uh, 2013, I was pushed out from Congress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was a Congress minister then also. I was not given a ticket. It yes. was not my choice. Yes. So that way, like, uh, you know, uh, I have to face the consequences. Of, uh, on those days also, mm -hmm. like uh, my people were shot, my people were killed, my house was blasted. I don't know who did that one, but uh, you know, like uh, eventually, like I was not given a ticket, and then like uh, I have to, you know, like uh, fight from the independent. Okay. In okay. 2018, I was given a platform by the NCP party. Mm -hmm. I was called, invited, <laughs> and then like uh, so, since I got opportunity and I joined. Uh, NCP just prior to the election only that is in in on the month of January mm -hmm. 15 mm -hmm. so likewise I'm still NCP even <laughs> now also I might continue as an NCP because okay. I haven't changed my mind yet but right now looking at the scenario from the you know all over India uh, though there are no such places where is any state is run by the NCP but yet I'm still sticking with the NCP till now see there is a bit of a confusion here because in Maharashtra, the NCP is uh, fighting, is aligned with the Congress and is in the opposition now. They are not with the BJP. Mm. And here you are working in a government which is aligned with the BJP. So how do these ideological principles uh, clash with each other or don't they clash? Or do they um, allow you to choose which, which uh, government you want to align with? Uh, uh, let me tell you one thing, ma'am, about the NCP is that uh, the beauty of NCP, you can say, they don't uh, interfere in, or intervene in any kind of any issues that is from the other state. Uh, that's what I like, actually. Now, when I told them that I'll be joining with the, you know, MDA party, which is, uh, you know, tagging along the uh, BJP also, they said that it's n no issues, you can go along with that. But only problem is that like uh, whatever issues, you know, or whatever motto or whatever memorandum that we have already, you know, like uh, before the election that we have, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, appealed for before the people that you sh I should try to, you know, do the job only. Mm -hmm. This is, mm -hmm. that's the whole I ideology. Means you have to deliver. Deliver, mm -hmm. deliver. So you have been looking after the Meghalaya Tourism, yes, Tourism yes. Development Corporation now as the Just recently only, only two, I think uh, last from here, last year only. It's not even one year yet. Okay. So what have you been able to do? What have you been able to achieve? You know that Meghalaya is um, really on the tourism map of the whole country and of the world. Uh, people are seeking out newer destinations. But we don't seem to have a strategy in place. People come from Assam on day trips. We don't gain anything, but uh, all these uh, 
cars they add to the traffic jam yeah so what uh, broad policies do you have in mind and is it possible for you to push for a tourism policy yes yes i've been doing that ma'am now for example one of the longest pending uh, issues that kroboru yes i think uh, we are pushing really hard mm -hmm. so that we might be able to finish it we thought of you know uh, having the shop opening even this month itself mm -hmm. but the fact is that like uh, there were certain issues uh, you know that cannot be resolved just because of that we have already you know like uh, changed the shop opening date mm -hmm. and another thing is that uh, whatever you so speaking so when is the next uh, date set uh, for the maybe in the month opening. of september i think so okay. ma'am uh, one of my engineer he's still in uh, you know hospitalized actually oh. he's having this stand uh, you know heart mm -hmm. stand mm -hmm. i don't know i'm not sure yes, yes. that thing mm -hmm. he has done so i think he might be joining the office maybe by the first week of this month i mean mm -hmm. next month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then another thing is that for the tourist you know tourism sector what we have plan is that like we wanted to have a master plan mm. especially when you look at uh, the all over the meghalaya like we have one of the best canyon you can yes. see better yes. than other parts of the world mm -hmm. now we have got the best waterfalls lots of waterfalls and then lots of untouched uh, virgin forests are still there which we have not connected yet and then if we can master plan all those things in a manner that we might be able to sell those out market it out i think we will be blooming with the tourists now for example uh, i made a few changes actually like for example in that uh, uh, umyam lake mm -hmm. now we are bringing para selling and all yes. which we have already given the order and then we are making a restaurant dock also uh, you know by the you know lake itself okay. and then we want like to like that floating dock yeah, floating, long ago yes, long yes, ago no yes yes like that one like <laughs> that one. but that one went down yes yes now we are bringing the better one okay. and then moreover we are bringing some kind of jet ski ah. not the some kind of we are bringing the jet ski okay. and then it will add up uh, you know to the adventures and then not only the jet ski or the you know jeep lining and all but we are bringing even the you know that uh, what do you call this one the motor um, what do you call this one the the cable car oh, <laughs> sorry sorry car, so it's well, yeah cable yeah, car and we are, we are a, proposing the yes, cable car cable car project has been in the mind of the no we have government. already proposed it in the letter so from the where to also. where now uh, one is that like in umiam lake mm -hmm. from that, uh, that now nec building is coming up okay. from near that building will be going to that uh, island actually one ah, island is yes, there yes, yes. so from there it will be like to and fro mm -hmm. and yeah. another one is that we have proposed even in maukrawat also okay uh, so but we are proposing will, even will government be able to run these projects mm, we have to bring the expert ma'am now we so can isn't it better than to privatize sort of, yeah, yeah no we are planning on that also but uh, right now what we have plan is that i have already talked with the chief minister also mm -hmm. so he is also keen in interest regarding this one but i don't know till now we haven't met yet but uh, after giving all those proposals and all he because was because if you look at jiva it was hmm. so badly done initially now it is a money spinner yes people are saying orchid lake resort could be equivalent to regan jai you know huh. in terms of resource generation yes, but yes. it's not able to do it because the work culture is very poor yes yes no we have we are checking that one ma'am mm -hmm. and uh, we are trying to transform that particular oalar also mm -hmm. that orchid lock yeah. uh, orchid lake resort also so we are planning on that one we are on the way as i've told you one of my engineer is already stuck in the hospital mm -hmm. once he come back you will see all the you know master plan we have already planned it nicely and then moreover Uh, we are trying to make an exclusive maybe better than the rikanjai you can say okay better than the rikanjai my target is to be make it better than the rikanjai mm -hmm. because the water that lake itself it's on that particular you know like uh, area only yes. where we can you know uh, we are trying to make an exclusive by bringing the you know uh, private boat mm -hmm. kind of a thing you know mm -hmm. where you know like uh, uh, where we can give some kind of an exclusivity okay. actually to those uh, you know who will come and then you know stay in that particular olar o l r i mean to say <laughs> so uh, not only that one even we are proposing for the you know like um, how would you say like rafting you know uh, lots of other things will definitely come the way the reason i'm stressing on tourism is because this is one of the major revenue earners and we see new destinations coming up but we see them very badly organized in terms of the product selling no yes yes uh, the the cost is too too less yeah you go to the living route bridge maybe you pay 50 rupees per head which is nothing really in this day and age and also there is a a feeling 
that people cannot just come to Meghalaya. They have to go online. They have to first apply there and see if they can come on a particular day. You can't have 500 people going to Living Root Bridge, no? Yeah. So all these things have to be taken care of. I, I really am hoping that before 2023, you're going to come up with a tourism policy. This is the, you know, the expectation of a large majority of people in the state. As the chairman of the MTDC right now, I'm trying my best. And then uh, now I have a minister above me, even the chief minister above me. We have already planned in place. And then I'm also talking with my MD, mm -hmm. that is Cyril actually. So, you know, like uh, for every for every project, whatever schemes that we are getting from the center also, and then whatever schemes we may get from the stale so so we are trying to address it in such a way that, you know, all those sequential, uh, you know, the problems mm -hmm. that we have right now, mm -hmm. you know, like, we are trying to, you know, locate that one and then and see if it can be transformed into something better. So how does um, Meghalaya Tourism Development Corporation uh, relate to or work together with Meghalayan Age? Right now, uh, we don't have such kind of agreement till then. But, because, uh, yeah, but, but see, because the use of resources is from the same pool, right? From yeah. tourism. Yes, yes, yes. So how does it work out? Now, right now, whatever resources we are getting, like uh, directly from the center, state we are getting few, no doubt. But uh, from Meghalayan age, you know, like uh, the collaboration, whatever that is happening, you know, no, so the money, I, I'm the, not having the idea. No, the about money it. that comes from Jaika, huh. all these, um, all all the money that is coming from the other international yes, <coughs> yes, institutions, yes, yes. they are supposed to be for tourism. So how is that money sort of allocated then? Let me be frank with you, ma'am. Uh, right now, as a chairman, I haven't received any money from the Jaika yet. Maybe. Uh, since uh, Megal and SNH... Maybe it comes to the government directly or to uh, maybe, yes, yes, yes. Age Limited? Me, Megal, me, yeah, yeah, that MAL only, they are having the say about that one only. I don't have a say about that one anymore. So then uh, how can that happen? Mm. <laughs> I mean, the, the policy a, is There is a disconnect somewhere, no? Yes, yes, it's disconnecting, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm, it's a frank, let me be frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me come back to politics. The NCP has only five MPs in a Lok Sabha. Mm. Uh, people who are looking at the NCP, they think it's a diminishing entity. It mean, and then it's see you have it only in Maharashtra, and a sprinkling somewhere, and Laksa then Deep. one one <laughs> in one in Meghalaya. So uh, people are wondering how long will the NCP be a party? <sighs> it's mm, yeah. Are you it's... looking at fighting the next election from the NCP only? No, right now, like I haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> or you, or you still have to decide. Yes, yes. I'm still deciding on that one actually, but still I'm with the NCP till now. Okay. I may be still with the NCP. Let me be frank in a sense, like for example, I just don't want to shift from one place to another place, you know, like shifting might change my people's now mindset. Everybody's also. shifting, no? Ah, you, you that must is be very seeing true. everybody's shifting from here to there, yeah. there to here. Yeah. Anyway, for the, uh, you know, like uh, I have to like, look at the people's perfect perspective also. Mm -hmm. Like uh, what will be the view or how do I look at, you know, how do I deliver? So mm. automatically, you know, looking at the delivery mechanism to change this one, I think uh, I might have to think twice. So who's your closest rival then from your present constituency? Right now, none yet. What about NPP? They don't have... NPP, uh, they haven't named yet. Okay. With TMC, I think uh, that's Sadia Rani. Mm -hmm. Janet's wife is there. Okay, okay. But I don't think she's a threat now. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Meghalaya, you've seen all the indicators, all the surveys. We are down in education. Very we are, true. We are down in poverty. Poverty is growing. Mm. Uh, we, have, we are now at 33%. Bihar is 37%. So we are coming Almost closer to Bihar. Bihar. I mean, are these issues of concern to you? Definitely, you have been seeing me speaking on the floor of the house every now and then. You know, not only about the educations, about the health sector, about the farmers and everyone. Unemployment, 
Now you see, once we don't have the educated people who are knowledgeable about any issues, then how do they supposed to become the entrepreneur also? That is, you know, one of the logic behind actually. So there is, a, <clears throat> recently a lot of people have been getting together, you know, a lot of people have been thinking also that in Meghalaya maybe we need two boards. You cannot lump everyone under MBOs and make everyone study the same syllabus because mm -hmm. in the rural areas, what you need is more of vocational education. Yeah. So in Gujarat, for instance, you have a rural board. Yes. So what about Meghalaya? Because we have to tailor ourselves to our needs. No, right now, one, what I'm feeling is that we don't need one, two, three board. One board is enough. But the fact is that delivery mechanism should be, you know, disciplined. This is all, what all we need. And then to discipline it, we have to make sure that all the sources, whatever, you know, you know, like uh, whatever they should get, they should get it actually. Unless and until we are serious about, you know, handling this particular disease that we are having right now. I think, uh, you know, in the future, we will have more of the unemployment. Maybe we, we might, you know, like we might create more of the militants in the future. You never know. Never know, yeah. And then automatically we, we will wrong them. Whereas we should wrong it ourselves right now itself. See, the point is, again, you're, you're talking about unemployment. But we have a contradiction in terms. We want inner line permit. Hmm. And then we don't want the railways. Business people have been saying that the government never consults us. And if they consulted us, we would tell them that we need the railways to bring our goods and to make the goods cheaper. We know Meghalaya is a very expensive state in terms of uh, you know, the cost of bringing goods. Yes. So why is it, I mean, what has the government done to convince people that you need the railways? You already have it in Mendi Pathar, yes, up to Mendi Pathar. Yes, we have. And how has it helped? No, right now we don't have the goods train yet in Mendi Pathar. Okay. If that good, good train comes, maybe it will help a lot. Because right now, whatever money that is flowing through, uh, you know, like Meghalaya, it's going to Assam only. Otherwise, yes. the stock would be, have been in Meghalaya only. And then all the stock is, once the money, is, the stock is, you know, becomes from the Meghalaya, then automatically the money will roll within the state. Yes. Now, on the other way around, when we talk about so that... So you are at the mercy of the Assam traders? Yes, our people are at the mercy of the Assam traders. Mm -hmm. To be frank enough. Yeah. Even now also, you, you know, like, uh, it's the bunny heart which, uh, you, you know, it's the, you know, other way, other side of the bunny heart which is making more money yes. than our people. Yes. Now, now it will come back round back to the education only. Our people are not equipped with the education with the knowledge. Unless and until they are fed with those knowledge, then they will understand. And another thing is that now we are talking about the inner line permit every now and then. It's very needed also, to be frank enough, on the other way around. In a sense, for example, our people are like, uh, you know, very, you know, like mega small. And our people are very scared that, you know, like our people might end up, you know, like... Uh, uh, minority, you know, minority. Yeah. not only minority, you know, like uh, we, we might end up not getting even our land also, not only for me, for my but children. But aren't that. we protected enough? No, we are protected, but in a sense, for example, the laws are, you know, like, uh, it's, you know, like, it's flexible, you know. Mm. You have seen lots of yes. laws out here. Yes. Okay. The it's land already Transfer been, Act. Land it has transfer been modified many it, times. Many times. And then, you know, like, People are not secure. Last time we were talking about the mortgage land, this and that. Mm -hmm. Remember in the yes. house itself. Yes. Now, our people started giving the mortgage land and it becomes the non tribal entities afterwards yes. when they seize the land. Uh, so those things are not been, you know, mm -hmm. the, the laws are not, you know, acutely strong enough, strong enough mm -hmm. to protect our people. Maybe that's why our people fear is quite true also. So we have to respect, mm -hmm. you know, in that particular sense. Since we are with the government, uh, may I ask, how do you feel about this uh, border resolution between Meghalaya and Assam? Uh, I think... Uh, Especially Garo Hills. Yeah, even both. Now we have not touched the block one, block two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. What will be the psychology of block one, block two? Yes. Now they started touching this lung pit that day. Mm. Now huge hue and cry started, mm. you know, uh, in this reason actually. Were you <laughs> consulted in this whole border resolution as a member of the government? 
not much no. to be frank na is it because uh, the area you represent is not near the border yes yes maybe that's the reason why mm-hmm. but what about those mlas who are uh, you know next to those border areas were they consulted in garo i'm not sure ma'am mm. i have not been there. but uh, uh, during the mda meeting after the agreement was done we have been apprised of that Nothing Do you think that? this land issue this border issue will become a big election issue you think I'm not sure man now for example we have a habit of you know like uh, not engaging ourselves during the election everybody you know even the NGOs even the church leaders anybody anybody talks anything uh, within the weekend day I mean weekdays but when it comes to the election they said that ah i don't want to be part of the election whereas they forget about their own responsibility mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is why like uh, any issues during the election becomes null and void so how do we make people more involved more engaged they should realize they are not voting for mla or a party they should realize that they are voting for themselves then only things will change otherwise you see they started voting for money they somebody voted for the party this and that later on you know like they started agitating for certain issues now for example they have voted for mda last yes, government yes. everybody started agitating at least they should you know like it's them only who has given the mandate mm-hmm. why they're bothering about it yes yes, yes. Huh? if they're bothering about it everybody should engage in yes, election yes nobody should, should be away that's why they should vote for themselves not for mla not for Uh, ministers not for party not for a congress not for anybody think twice before voting mm-hmm. so that you know they will be useful in the future yes i feel pity for them you know like those who don't get you know involved in the election and yet they criticize mm-hmm. so see whenever there is a study done uh, on meghalaya the focus is largely on khasi jaintia hills very little uh, we hear very little about garo hills per se about access to health access to education the dropout rates since you uh-huh. are the first person we have interviewed from the garo hills uh, what do you think about this don't you think that there's a kind of discrimination in the studies in yeah. the surveys in the analysis no everywhere ma'am there's lots of discrimination happening not only i won't say that it's only for the garo hills even for the khasi hills also when you go to the villages you will see lots of khasis who are still uneducated you know even that discrimination doesn't happen only now for example when you talk about the khasi and jaintia it's only ends up in shillong and then yes, joy yes okay yes, not yes, the villages yes, when yes. you go outside the villages i mean outside the shillong you will see large mm-hmm. large chunk of people who who doesn't know who you know whose mindset are still like you know like still orthodox mm-hmm. who doesn't want to cope with the other outsiders mm-hmm. i've seen last time you, you might have seen like khasis beating khasi yeah Huh? Yeah. which they don't like the you know like outsiders yes. to go there yeah. so like that in garo hills we have the same also so like why i know our people are being discriminated to be frank enough we don't have even a single is officer till that now we are celebrating 75 years of independence okay you had mr tigidi <laughs> the he is from he is from assam <laughs> not from garo hills <laughs> yes. and but i feel proud that uh, at least one of the garo has become the is officer mm-hmm. i feel proud and then one was there also who has been the nec secretary now yes, they are all retired yes. but after this we don't have none now we are talking about the we don't want to uh, you know we don't want to uh, stay uh, under the non tribal this and that but our people are being run by the non tribal only yes, yes look yes. at we are talking about the ilp yeah, okay yeah, yeah. but what about the officers they are all non tribals sp is non tribal dc is non tribal <laughs> everyone is non tribal so sometimes you don't look at the you know a good picture actually the real picture mm-hmm. so you have been an mla for three terms mm-hmm. what is the single legislation you have pushed any bill that is important for the people of meghalaya you're talking about the resolution yes no i'm talking of a bill you know oh, the only myself. bill we can remember or the only act we can remember the only legislation we talk about till today is the land transfer act yes other than that we haven't seen any important legislation till that now when you're talking about the bill and all 
you need the majority especially in democracy man yes now i'm really trying hard on myself but whenever i get elected i'm always alone put aside last time when i was a minister from the you know like uh, congress i try to even speak against the government that's why i've not been given a ticket mm-hmm. this is what happens actually in democracy you know mm-hmm. democracy is good on the other side when people realize you know and participate but when people doesn't participate even you know the best Feeds. man cannot uh, you know the best mm-hmm. cannot man and do anything at all this way sometimes no, i but, feel like democracy is worse no but many people think that you are a lone ranger you you don't work well with other people i will i work well with other people ma'am i definitely like if somebody is thinking good for the people definitely i'll be there i don't want i'm not greedy i don't want any you know any kind of a power but if somebody is doing good thing definitely i will follow so uh, one of the studies has found the latest uh, national family health survey has found that 41% of households in Meghalaya are led by single women. Now, I don't know about uh, how, how serious the problem, problem in Garo Hills is about single mothers. In Khasi Jaintia Hills, it is rampant. So does this affect you as a legislator? Yes, yes, ma'am. There's a lot, actually, even now also. I've been helping lots of them, even from my constituency. When you just look at a simple, small constituency like mine itself, mm-hmm. I'm having a large number of single mom. you know like whom i really have to like look after them also directly not no, even no, indirectly also is, directly what is the government doing government somewhat you see now there's a lots of rules and regulations even to get there you know uh, any kind of a pension any kind of a, you know uh, uh, subsidies we, we know that the government is giving them 500 rupees a month what is 500 rupees a month it's an insult actually may it might be an insult but some of them they're not even getting it also this is the problem you see the regulations which they have put now they just cannot go and then just pick it up mm-hmm. even for 500 rupees they have to troll every now and then you know like mm-hmm. which you know like uh, from one which table to another then, mm-hmm. and then you know uh, you know like automatically they give up taking it also mm-hmm. this is the problem that we are having right now so if i were to ask you what are the most serious issues confronting meghalaya today what would those issues be right now in the future it will be education mainly because right now since we have already introduced the cute maximum of them they are not getting the uh, you know uh, what uh, admission also mm-hmm. how our people will get edu- i mean uh, like a good education outside the state yeah. whereas our state used to be the you know education hub before mm-hmm. now it is changing the nature now another thing is that the health issue ma'am mm-hmm. this education in health is one of the main factor unless and until we deal with this one i'm telling you our state is going to collapse in the future talking about the other sector transport sector and then you know trade sector and all somewhat it's quite manageable actually it's managing also but these other two area if we don't handle it nicely we will create lots of other you know evil society you can say but there's anti social activities will come up definitely there's a lot of communication backlog also no so many areas rural areas in garo hills khasi hills jaintia hills are still not connected and uh, when you talk to the headmen they say that these uh, you know because we are so badly connected we cannot bring our produce to the markets and so what will happen is all the people will leave the village and come to shillong or to joai and start selling things in, as hawkers on the streets yeah no very true ma'am now now whatever produce the farmers are producing right now they cannot bring it even if they produce also in a large scale what happen is that uh, nobody is buying it and then in the next year and the next season they are discouraged and then you know uh, they automatically diminishes their product anyway so this is happening right now what we need is a marketing once we create a market in every sector in every district i think that will definitely help Mm-hmm. otherwise otherwise you know like just giving randomly it will never help anymore now you already have the chairman of farmers commission uh, what is that farmers commission really doing uh, on the ground in terms of, because you see agriculture has always been divorced from marketing when in fact it should be one it should it should be integrated no actually like the problem is that you know our state is becoming the you know like uh, um, how the testing state testing for new ground. product testing ground 
mm-hmm. for all the new products new new things is coming up and then if that mission is not successful they are bringing another one another mission. which is a wastage of money so they are just testing all these missions uh, yes yes you see once upon a time i have seen one of the legislator from rangsakona who has made uh, one uh, coal storage okay coal storage at that time uh-huh. just imagine uh-huh. before us okay till now i have not seen even a single coal storage you know even a uh, storage for the product that is being bought by the people mm-hmm. does it mean so it? that coal storage is still running it's not running even not running. but still at least they have the mindset the mind, to the mind, uh, you know uh, pr- uh, uh, create that particular mm-hmm. uh, you know coal why storage why do you think this is not happening this this coal storage we have been hearing from 20 years ago or yes. maybe 25 years ago why is it not you know really coming and being installed what are the handicaps i think there is not a sincere approach mm-hmm. simple as that if i'm willing to do something for the people do you think you would have made a good agriculture minister if i'm been supported by the chief minister you can say why this if now you see all the power is with the chief minister now for example if i want to do something if uh, you know like if if the decision is made by the ayak then then it changes the whole scenario so these things are happening but you know this is a, a participatory democracy parliamentary democracy where the chief minister has a limit to how much he can control if you're given a department you're in charge of that department you have to do the best for that department you don't have to get an okay from the chief minister every time no after all it is discussed in the cabinet everything ha huh, might be but in reality it's not happening na no? it's not happening okay <laughs> so you are telling us some home truths no no that's why i'm saying like uh, if chief ministers and others accept that whatever i propose then i think things will go straight i think even chief minister will agree also if you know like proposal everything is you know like uh, good for the people yes yes best for the people because there are certain uh, sectors like agriculture education which the ministers are saying nobody wants to take no everybody wants to take come on uh, yeah the education minister said that he was forced to take up education the agriculture minister said nobody wanted agriculture then chief minister told me to take it up so uh, what is it about agriculture that people don't want to take it up agriculture agriculture would have been the nicest and the best thing which you can you know do good things for the people justice for the people but the fact is that right now you know uh not even a single department is healthy not even a single department mm-hmm. in a sense for example when you look at all the other department all the, all the department maximum all the departments are not well equipped either with the people nor with the equipments nor with the missionaries so this is the you know like we are having a handicap or maybe um, you know polio departments what is it uh, what is the crop that has the highest value in garu hills which crop you're talking mm-hmm. about uh right now there are a few stock of rice okay. which is very much valuable but nobody's packing it and selling it oh. and then there are other you know like um, how would you say even the uh, spices also are there mm-hmm. now gulmuris mm-hmm. the yeah, black pepper, the red pepper yes. and then even we have the coffee also yes. so nobody is doing those things what about so, tea yeah tea is also there tea is also there Uh, but uh, tea is also there is one of and the and how is the cashew nut production now it's quite less now oh. because nobody is entertaining those cashew nut anymore because they are replacing it with the arecca nut they are replacing it with the rubber they are replacing with the, you know other plantations maybe that's so the is, reason why so is is this mono cropping good for the soil no no it's not good that's why like once i was a cnr minister we started with the multi cropping thing mm-hmm. i started uh, bringing this coconut cocoa and then black pepper mm-hmm. but just uh, after that like uh, i started that particular mission along with the kane kumar who is also the chairman yes. right now yes. but the fact is that like uh, uh, you know like i cannot continue because i was in the opposition as an mm-hmm. in independent mm-hmm. so that mission failed okay. otherwise it should not have because i was trying hard to replace the rava mm. Yes. with the cocoa yes. i mean with the coconut, coconut. because okay. in other states in other parts of the country this uh, rubber is being replaced by the coconut okay. you know they are using the rubber fiber i mean instead of rubber fiber they are using the coconut fiber okay. so all those things was planted but uh, i cannot uh, continue with my mission because 
I was in the opposition mm -hmm. at the time. So do you see yourself as a constituency leader or a state leader? Because almost every MLA just looks at his constituency and nobody is thinking about the state in general. I am t always talking about the state, ma'am. Not only about my constituency every now and then. You can see whenever I talk, I don't talk about my uh, constituency only. But the fact is that like uh, sometimes uh, certain things you have to limit to your constituency also because your constituency requires certain kind of attends, attention also. Now, for example, road, this and that, you know. Yes. Now, for example, for any kind of development, some packages come from the Delhi. All of the MLA, we have to fight for that particular uh -huh. packages. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, sometimes a chief minister distribute for us like five crore for the road, you know, two crore for the road, you know, like that. But if we don't, you know, come and then beg uh, through him, then we might not get it also. Well, we have had a very good conversation and we've learned a lot about uh, how the government functions, the power of the chief minister and how difficult it is to get projects running on the ground. Uh, we wish you well and we hope that you will be able to do better to contribute to the growth of the state. Uh, thank you viewers for watching this episode and we hope that you will continue to watch other episodes with the other legislators that we will be talking to from time to time.